Irish stout, milk stout, oatmeal stout, tropical stout. I've brewed them all, but you know which stout I haven't brewed? American stout. That is the challenge for today. Plus, I'm going to show you what this thing is for. I'm Martin Keane, taking the homebrew challenge to brew 99 beers in 99 weeks. And if you've seen some of my other videos in this series, well, two things. One, you've probably seen me brew a stout. I've done quite a few. And two, you might be familiar with my woes with this extractor fan. It is always dripping down during the boil. Well, today I am testing something from Spike Brewing. It's a steam condenser lid, which should mean I don't need to use this thing at all. We're gonna put this to the test with today's beer, American Stout. But before we get to all of that, let's talk about what we're making today, this American Stout. Now, saying that you're brewing an American Stout, it's, it's a bit like saying, I'm making a German lager. Well, which one? This is a, a really broad category. Over the last 10, 20 years, craft brewers have done all sorts of cool and interesting things with American stouts. You know, ingredients like chocolate and coffee have been quite common, but also some other pretty far out things as well. I've seen them with licorice, uh, fruits, molasses, all sorts of things. So the first decision is really narrowing down what ingredients to use. What are you going for with this beer? And what I'm going for, well, nothing too crazy. No crazy ingredients in this one. I brewed Irish stout a little while ago and just really enjoyed the simplicity of that one. And I'd like to use that as a base for this recipe, but just sort of amp up the strength of the beer a bit and also increase the bitterness and the aroma on this, just a touch as well, to bring it more in line with American stout. So what I'm looking to do here is to build a beer with an original gravity of around 1062 and in the grist I'm going to have 70% of pale two row malt and then I will have 8% each of caramel 60, Munich malt and chocolate malt. Then I'm going to add in 3% each roasted barley and flaked barley. The hops, well, I'm going for an IBU here of about 47 and 41 of those IBUs are going to come with a bittering hop. I'm using Magnum, putting that in at the start of the boil. That's a nice, clean bittering hop for this style. Then I'm using Cascade as my flavor and aroma hop. So I'm going to put in one ounce of Cascade in with 10 minutes left and then another ounce in at flame out. So these are all of the parts of the Spike Brewing Steam Condenser Lid. This is the lid itself, it has three ports, and this is the 10 gallon version uh, of this lid. So you need to buy the lid that's gonna fit your brewing system. And if you go onto the Spike Brewing website, they list the dimensions so you can see whether or not your kettle is gonna fit this lid. Now, the basic idea of this is that as steam rises in the boil, we are going to use cooled water to condense that steam and get rid of it. So, let me start to build this thing up. So, we've got some piping here, which is really the main connection to the lid. 
So I'm gonna connect this up with a clamp and a gasket. Okay, there we go. And then I've got two other ports here. Uh, one of these is used just to sort of add stuff in during the boil. So if you're making hop additions, for example, I think you could put them through here. And then here, we basically have a window into what's going on in the kettle. And again, I've got a gasket. And then just this clear piece of plastic, which I'm gonna clamp on here. So that's all of the ports filled on the kettle. And now you can see that as the steam is gonna rise here during the boil, we are going to send cold water down here and it's gonna exit out the other end of this pipe. To that end, we have this hose, which is going to send the water in. And the hose has a little mister at uh, the bottom of it here. So this mister is gonna spray out cold water down into this pipe. And then the last thing to add is this drain hose. So this is where the water is going to go once it's done its business of cooling and also the steam that we've condensed will, will come out here as well. So that's it, pretty easy to put together just a case of screwing in a few clamps. Now we need to send water in here and to do that there is a supplied little pump. This pump has got suction cups on the bottom so yeah that can stick in place into a bucket and we're going to use this to pump water through the system. So what's happening here now is the water is coming in through here, running back out through here once it's gone through the mister and any steam that comes up should be um, converted back to liquid and, and flowed out there as well. Right, so I need to add my first hop addition and that is my magnum hop addition. And I could do it through that port, but because I've just put this top on, I'm just gonna lift it up and pour this in. Now the other thing of note is the boil off rate is gonna be a bit less here. Uh, we're not gonna evaporate quite as much steam as we would with the top off. So uh, that's something you might want to take cons into consideration when you're coming up with your recipe. Um, I actually haven't done that, but I believe it's around sort of like 6% less boil off than you would expect. Uh, I'm just winging it right now. But there's already a lot to be said by the fact that I don't have this fan running super loud all the time. I've just got the drip of this coming in here and I can hear the, uh, the heating element going on and off in my kettle, but that's it. So much more relaxing experience. The only thing I need to keep on top of is just to make sure that there is enough cold water here in this bucket. Now I mentioned earlier that you need to get the lid that fits your brewing system and I looked at the specifications on the Spike Brewing website and my kettle looked like it was very close to the minimum size that would fit this thing and when I actually got this I realized that I've been measuring it a little optimistically and my claw hammer kettle is about like a one eighth of an inch too small for the minimum size that it says that this supports and as a result this doesn't quite sit properly all the way into the kettle. So that's a little bit unfortunate. It's super, super close. But I did test this earlier just with some boiling water when I first got the unit and it was able to maintain a vacuum. And how I know that is because there's no steam coming out from around the sides whatsoever. So even though this is technically too large a lid for my kettle, just slightly. It still seems to be doing the job. And then just lastly about this, the other thing I noticed is that I have my temperature or the percentage that I'm using the heating element at as much lower than normal. I'd normally set this to around 55 or 60%, and I'm running at 30% here and still able to keep a rolling boil. beer is in the fermenter. I took a gravity reading, 1054. I was looking for 1062. And yeah, I think that is what happens 
when you wing it. I took no notice of the fact that my boil off rate would be less, I used the regular profile in Beersmith and that's why I've missed my gravity. I did take a gravity reading at the end of the mash, I was where I should be at the end of the mash. So that is something to keep in mind that you're just not going to condense the beer as much in this sort of system. So you need to, to account for that in your beer brewing software. Anyway, it's uh, yeast time. Now I'm using Yeast 1056. I used this in my American Porter just recently as well. This is a, a great strain for strong dark beers. I'm going to ferment at 68 Fahrenheit to 20 Celsius. And in a few weeks, I'll be back. Here is the stout. Nicely poured, Lauren. You're welcome. I thought about sneakily putting this on nitro because um, I really like my stouts to be served with that creamy mouthfeel, but my nitro tap is currently serving cold brew coffee. So um, even without that, I think this looks like a really nice looking beer. What do you think? Yeah, it does. Okay, I think this is the darkest beer that you've made so far, because I can't see through it. There is no light coming through this, is there? Unless like you look at the very bottom where your fingers yeah. are. Yeah, you said last week's beer was, um, did you say crimson? No, not crimson. There's a little bit of like mahogany. 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 Yeah. You said it was mahogany, and this one is just like... This is jet black. Black. Yeah. Like I, I can see the reflections of the... I can see my reflection in this. Like. <laughs> How's my hair look? Yeah. In your head, it yeah. looks kind of shiny. <laughs> <laughs> really cat. Okay. Well, well, it's very, very dark. Yeah, very dark. Um, okay. How about aroma? It smells like coffee. It does. It, it smells, smells, it smells like coffee. It smells roasted. Yeah. No, that's definitely that smells very roasty, very much like coffee. Hmm. From what I heard, it could sometimes have subtle hints of dark chocolate, which I like. I don't smell that. <laughs> Well, let's see if we can taste any anything other than roastiness. Um, it definitely lives up to its smell. Mm -hmm. um, it is quite, quite roasty. Roasty, yes. I'm not really picking up on coffee or chocolate. Not actually, like drinking it wise. Um, yeah, I didn't actually taste that much coffee. I'm also, the more I drink it, just picking up a little bit on some hop character. Yeah, the more I drink it, the more, the more a little, a little bit of a hop twang I'm getting from it. It's so liquidy. <laughs> <laughs> really does feel like it's got a high water concentrate, this one. This is, yeah, there's a lot of water. Yeah. It's very wet. Mm. <laughs> we have all the best descriptors on the homebrew challenge. <laughs> yeah, we need to get a thesaurus. I need a thesaurus. <laughs> I feel like we say the same descriptors oh, pretty much. Ooh, this it's is very toasty. Toasty, roasty, hoppy, malty. Bready. Oh, bready. Yeah, that's bready. a good one. Mm. Yeah, we need we need mm, some. Smells please, like coffee. If you have some good descriptors for us that we could sound smarter, <laughs> put them in the comments because we're running out. Yeah. If you want to make this beer, everything's in the description, including the link to Atlantic Brew Supplies recipe kit. We have another stout on the menu next week. Okay. It's a different type of stout and it will be maybe a little stronger. So until then, cheers. cheers.